on OSRC News at 7. On State Government discountenance rumored return of Governor Akeredolu. On Do Amoteku restates call for security consciousness, charges high profile suspects to court. IPOP announces end to sit at home order. And from the foreign scene, death toll in Hawaii devastating fires seen rising as over 1,000 declared missing. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on the news tonight. My name is Saheed Aribisala. The Ondo State Government has urged people of the state to continue to pray for the quick and safe return of the Governor Oluwaro Timia Kredolu from his medical vacation. The government, while acknowledging the eagerness of the people of the state to have the Governor back, clarified that a viral video circulating on social media suggesting the return of the governor to the state was not a recent one. A statement by the Chief Press Secretary to the governor, Richard Olatole, said Governor Luaro Timia Kredolu is still in Germany and is focused on his full recovery. The statement assured the people of the state of the governor's safe return to continue to execute his administration's redeemed agenda and provide good governance. The Chief Press Secretary in the statement added that the governor was eagerly looking forward to reuniting with the people of the state and urged continued prayers for the safe return back to the state. 29 suspects arrested by the Undo State Security Network, codenamed Amoteku, for various offenses have been charged to court. The core commander of Amoteku, Akogmwade Tujadile, was also at the magistrate court premises to beef up security in the area. Omori Alangbaji has details. These 29 suspects were arraigned for kidnapping, rape, and armed robbery. Ten of them were charged with six counts of conspiracy, kidnapping, armed robbery, and illegal possession of firearms, while others are facing other criminal offenses like burglary, rape, stealing, and illegal possession of firearms. According to a Motekun call, the suspected kidnappers and others at large committed the offenses between the months of April and June 2023 at different locations on Owakure roads. Agoinbo in Akure, Igbatsuru Famuwagun camp, Osi town in Akure North local government area of the state. State prosecutor Olushegun Akiridulu prayed the court to remand the offenders at Olokuta Correctional Center based on their offenses and pending the issuance of advice from the Directorate of Public Prosecutions. After the investigation of the cases, and those that are found culpable are the one in court now. Others that are not found to be that, or that, that cannot be pinned down are also being released on bail and some were released conditionally, why some are released unconditionally. According to Akiridulu, the offences contravened Section 516 of the Criminal Code Law of Ondo State 2006, Section 3, Subsection 2B of Ondo State Anti-Kidnapping and Anti-Abduction Law 2010, Section 3, Subsection 2C of Ondo State Violence Against Persons Prohibition Laws of Ondo State 2021. Basically, after very critical, discreet investigation, the one we have in court today are found by the investigation of the court to be culpable or at least as suspects uh, are to be involved in the offence for which they are now being charged to court. The charges were read to the defendants, but their pleas were not taken as the defence counsels laid by Mr. Obafemi told the court that the oral application sought by the prosecutor was not tenable and prayed to court for an adjournment to enable the defence reply the application on points of law. The trial magistrate, Damilola Shekoni, adjourned the case till August 21 for ruling of the bail application while they should remain in the custody. The Acting Inspector General of Police, Kayo Diagbetoku, says the force will establish a groundbreaking special intervention squad aimed at swiftly addressing security threats within the country. 
Egberto Kun during a visit to Kano State highlighted the court's purpose to tackle crises and violent crimes efficiently across Nigeria. He expressed the necessity of cooperation and support from the state government, emphasizing that the success of the squad hinges on such collaborations, emphasizing the importance of well-trained and adequately compensated personnel within the squad to effectively address the overwhelming security challenges facing the nation. The Acting Inspector General of Police added that the commitment to equip the Special Interventions Court underscores the police force dedication to enhance security and ensure citizens' safety. The Defense Headquarters has dismissed insinuations that the armed forces received a request for coup in the country. It described as concerning false and disturbing the reports that have awashed the social media space. A statement by the Director, Defense Information, Brigadier General Tukor Grosso said the military believed such false claims came from those who do not mean well for the country. He reiterated that the AFN never received nor made such a declaration at any time to anyone or to any group, adding that the AFN is very comfortable with democracy and remains loyal to the President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Tinubu. The indigenous people of Biafra IPOB has begun the distribution of flyers and posters to residents of the Southeast, informing them of the cancellation of the seat at home order. IPOB said the flyer distribution was to inform Southeast residents that it will no longer be used as a tool of civil disobedience in their pursuit of Biafra actualization. A statement by IPOP spokesman Emma Powerful said the group's leader, Nam Dekano, authorized the distribution of the flyers and posters. According to Powerful, any person or persons talking about a non existent seat at home in Biafra land is an enemy of the people and shall be dealt with accordingly, adding that the seat at home order will never again be invoked or deployed as a tool of civil disobedience in the quest for self determination. The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, has filed a lawsuit against the President of the Senate, Mr. Goswila Pabio, and Speaker of House of Representatives, Mr. Tajuddin Abbas, over plans to spend 40 billion naira on 465 exotic and bulletproof cars for members and principal officials, and 17 billion naira as palliatives for new members. The suit is coming on the use of the statement by Mr. Pabio that the clerk of the National Assembly had sent holiday allowances into the various bank accounts of senators while about 137 million Nigerians face extreme poverty. In the suit filed at the Federal High Court in Lagos, Serap is seeking an order of mandamus to direct and compel Mr. Pabu and Mr. Abbas to review and reduce the 40 billion naira budgeted to buy 465 sports utility vehicles and bulletproof cars for members and principal officials. Serap is also seeking an under order of mandamus to direct and compel Mr. Pabio and Mr. Bass to repeal the Supplementary Appropriation Act 2022 to reduce the budget for the National Assembly by 110 billion naira to reflect the current economic realities in the country. In the suit, Serap is arguing that Nigerians have a right to honest and faithful performance by the public officials including lawmakers as public officials or a fiduciary duty to the general citizenry. No date has been fixed for the hearing of the suit. Popular cleric Pastor Tunde Bakari says that even though the suspended governor of, cent of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN Godwin Emefiele, may have made wrong judgment in the management of Nigeria's monetary policy, it must not be made a scapegoat by the federal government. He said that considering the provisions of the CBN Act 2007, there is every possibility that the erstwhile CBN governor did not act without presidential authorization. Bakari, who stood at this during a State of the Nation address, maintained that the Mayfield should be prosecuted if found guilty of any crime. Bakari also berated the Department of State Services, DSS, for their role in Mayfield's arrest and detention saying the actions of the DSS have raised concerns over professionalism and adherence to the rule of law. The embattled CBN governor has been in custody of the DSS 
following his arrest on June 10th, hours after he was suspended by President Tidobo. Ebefele is being prosecuted by the federal government on two counts of illegal possession of firearms and ammunition. After the court granted the Mayfield bill, the federal government had on August 3rd filed an application seeking leave to appeal against the order granting bill to the suspended CBN governor. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has ailed veteran journalist and columnist Mr. Ray Epo on his 75th birthday. Tinubu, in a statement by spokesperson Ajuri Ingalali, described Apple's life as synonymous with the struggle for freedom, democracy, and the entrenchment of good governance in Nigeria. President Tinubu said the veteran journalist and respected columnist with a career spanning over 50 years in the Nigerian media landscape has consistently demonstrated a dogged commitment to progressive ideals. The president said his pen has been deployed to the service of society through frank, analytical, and engaging commentary that is uniquely characterized by its beautiful prose. Tedebo, on behalf of the federal government, congratulated Apple and prayed for many good years in sound mind of health and body. You're still watching OSLC News at 7. Afeni Ferry Chieftain saying Diarobofa beats wife farewell. Details of this and more after this break. An all express bay trip to Disneyland is the Indomie Golden Magnet promo. To participate, just buy that Indomie 70 gram pack and look for the magnet inside. Log into www.indomie.ng forward slash golden magnet promo to fill in your details and enter your unique magnet code. All the golden magnet winners will get to experience the wonders <laughs> of Disneyland. Silver magnet winners stand a chance to win amazing prizes. Every pack of Indomie you buy comes with your favorite indomitable magnet. Terms and conditions apply. Indomie, tasty nutrition, good for you. Win an all express bay trip to Disneyland is the Indomie Golden Magnet promo. To participate, just buy that Indomie 70 gram pack and look for the magnet inside. Log into www.indomie.ng forward slash golden magnet promo to fill in your details and enter your unique magnet code. All the golden magnet winners will get to experience the wonders <laughs> of Disneyland. Silver magnet winners stand a chance to win amazing prizes. Every pack of Indomie you buy comes with your favorite indomitable magnet. Terms and conditions apply. Indomie, tasty nutrition, good for you. You're welcome back. You can watch us live on our website, www.orsrc.ng, or follow us on our Facebook at OSRC TV. And on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel, OSRC TV, on Do. The remains of late Mrs. Elizabeth Arobofa, wife of renowned author and a Fenifere chieftain, Mr. Sandy Arobofa, has been laid to rest at the cemetery of St. Saviour's African Church, Ikomu or Kaakoko. According to her family, the deceased left lasting footprints and indelible marks that can never be forgotten. Joy Pius reports that the deceased lived for seven to seven years. <laughs> The St. Saviour's African Church, Ikomuo Kakoko, played host to well wishers who joined family members of the late Mrs. Elizabeth Arugbofa to pay their last respects to the deceased. The officiating minister, the Most Reverend Julius Olayinka Abi, while describing the deceased as selfless and one who dedicated her life to God, charged the congregants to serve God diligently and humanity in love. For her husband, renowned author and former Secretary General of Pan-Yoruba Social Political Group, 
Afeni Ferry, Mr. Sendi Arugbofa. His 56-year-old marriage to his wife was nothing short of exciting moments. My wife has been the greatest and longest project in my life. The woman did the best you could. And I will long remember her. She was great. She was. I it. And they are way. The remains of the deceased were lowered to Mother Earth amid betrayed emotions. <laughs> Her children, family members, and well-wishers described the deceased as a virtuous woman and one whose arms are always open to people. She was my backbone because she really cared for us. She would not sit until we are satisfied. Mama lived a good life, a perfect life, a life of service to the family and to humanity. She has been our pillar in our marriage with my wife. We are only going to miss her. She has touched the life of many, and I think that's why, that's the main, most important reason for living. She was always there at every time, at every point in the day, when people even think it's not convenient. Mama lived a, a meaningful life and we encourage the children to follow suit of the life that their mother lived. She's humble, gentle, a Christian to the core. And you see everything in her. The late Mrs. Elizabeth Arugofa was born on the 8th of August, 1946, and hailed from the famous Dari dynasty of Owalushi in Okakoko. She started her primary education in local authority primary school, Ibakaoka, and finished up at St. Clara's Roman Catholic School, Iwaroka. Proceeded for her secondary education at St. Mary's College, Adoikiti. Bagged a bachelor's degree in English in Yoruba from Obafemi Awolowo University. Mrs. Elizabeth Arubofa held different positions in church, organizations, and societies. She died on the 18th of June this year at age 77. Joy Pius, OS House News. The coalition of pro-democracy activists in Katsina State have strongly condemned and denounced what they termed as an unjustifiable coup d'etat in the Nigeria Republic and anywhere else in Africa. The coalition in a peaceful demonstration held in the state capital and led by its chairperson Bashir Dauda for the condemn the arrogance and disrespect to world leaders displayed by the coup leaders. The coalition demanded the immediate and unconditional release of President Bazoum, applauding the ECOWAS for its firm stance in support of democracy and the need to restore constitutional order in the Nigeria Republic. The coalition also warned Junta not to plunge the sub-region into a needless and unwarranted conflict because of their selfish gain. On the foreign scene, sanctions imposed on Niger by West African regional bloc ECOWAS may, may cost Nigeria $1.3 billion annually. Some analysts say the losses could be more than economic. The military coup, now in its third week, threatens to change relations between neighbors. The most difficult thing is uncertainty around everything. We don't know when this invasion will happen. Will it be air raids or ground operation? We hope it won't get to that. The general feeling of the people in the state is they are worried. They are worried, they are worried, they are worried. They don't want, to, they don't want us to go into war with the Niger Republic. This is the most unsettling period for everyone. No one knows what to do anymore, as life is almost unbearable. Prices of food items have doubled, or even tripled in some cases. What can ECOWAS do now? Are they going to attack Niger's presidential palace to save President Mohamed Bazoum? It makes no sense. 
I think the ECOWAS heads of state will be forced to come and negotiate with the junta in power in Niger. China should be in power for a while, but to negotiate him in short possible time to give the power to a civilian government. We support the coup 100% and we want peace in our country. Whoever runs the country, we want peace. That's our goal. He received reports that today he was able to see his doctor, um, but the, the situation remains concerning. We were told uh, by his family that uh, they've not had electricity, as you mentioned, since August 2nd, no contact with the outside world since August 4th, uh, including with his lawyer and the doctor who managed to see him, um, according to the reports uh, today. Family members and other friends who've not, you know, have, were not able to bring the family food and other supplies, who were also told that without electricity, the family had now been reduced to eating dry food. Um, and I think one of the most concerning um, uh, pieces of, of news was that uh, uh, President Bazoum's son has a serious heart condition and needed to see a doctor. Um, and uh, the doctor, alongside the family uh, lawyer at that time, had not been able to access uh, uh, President Bazoum and, and any of the family uh, members, anyone we spoke to, including uh, President Bazoum's own daughters and others, uh, including his former communication advisor, whether in or abroad um, informed Human Rights Watch that they were concerned by the length and arbitrary nature of the president's detention because of the toll that is obviously taking on the president, his family, as well as other senior government officials who have been arbitrarily arrested and detained. The devastating wildfires in Hawaii and now the worst the United States has seen in more than a century. At least 93 people have died and the death toll is seen rising as about 1,000 people are still missing. Questions have been raised about the initial emergency response and survivors say they did not get enough warning. Just so you know, 3%, that's what's been searched with the dogs, 3%. We got 12 more dogs on the way today. We just made that, I made that request, FEMA made that happen, they're on their way. But think about how hot and how humid it is and we can only go as fast as that animal can go. So we're bringing in more. There's a lot of energy you can spend on this tragedy right now. I think that time should be spent on recovery and rebuilding. These are our belongings. This is what we were able to grab. There were a lot of residents that just wanted to see if their house was still standing and just to assess you know what they're going to do next. I mean, a lot of us are trying to make tough decisions and whether or not your, your house is still standing or not is, is a big factor in that. And on sport, the World Athletics has denied the report that Toby Amoson has been cleared of doping and was now unable to defend a title in the forthcoming World Athletics Championship in Budapest, Hungary. Toby Wu's name was formally excluded by the Athletics Federation of Nigeria from participating in the upcoming competition due to old, old August 19 to August 27, 2023, as a result of the doping investigation was later included by the body adding that she has been cleared. But in a statement by its head of communications, Nicole Jeffrey, the world's athletic body, said it had not cleared the Nigerian star for the competition, saying that when a decision is made, it will be announced by the Athletics Integrity Unit. It said that the World Athletics included the 26-year-old Nigerian's name in the entry list for the Budapest Championships published last week, but with a provision that a participation would depend on the outcome of the whereabouts failure charge uh, preferred against her by the AIU. The AIU has said a decision regarding the matter will be made before the start of the World Championships. Following his recent knockout win against Finland's Robert Elinius at the O2 Arena in London on Saturday, two-time heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua has confirmed his next match will be against America's John Wilder. Joshua would disclose this after his win against Elenius not only confirmed Wilder as his next opponent, but added that he is just focused on smashing Wilder's head in. Anthony Joshua would noted that any time is a good time to fight, said it is only a fight that it is only a fight, and it does not matter who it is. He said he is only doing his best to keep heavyweight boxing on the map. Before we end the news tonight, let's take another look at the major stories. 
The Ondo State Government has dismissed reports of a return of the State Governor, Oluwaro Timi Akredolu, to the state from his medical vacation. The government, in a statement by the Chief Press Secretary, Richard Olatunde, said this clarification was necessary following the circulation of a viral video showing the purported return of the Governor. The Ondo State Amotekon Corps has restated its call on to residents of the state to be security conscious and report any suspicious activity to relevant agencies. The call restated the call while charging high-profile criminals, uh, criminal suspects, to court for prosecution. The indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, has announced the cancellation of its Monday sit-at-home order. IPOP said the order will no longer be used as a tool of civil disobedience in its pursuit of Biafra actualization. And from the foreign scene, we told you that the devastating wildfire in Hawaii have killed at least 93 persons, while about 1,000 people are still declared missing. And that's the news tonight. Thanks for watching.